Good day. I am Kimar Short, and I'm here to address the recent Central Bank report and to join the conversation about the debt levels of the government of Barbados. In the recent launch of the BERT 2.0 program, the term lost decade is still a heavily used term in that document. And this term can be reinforced by the unassuming mind in reading an article published by Professor Justin Robinson on Thursday, 27th October 2022 on the level of government debt in Barbados. Professor Michael Howard, Professor Don Marshall, and economist Carlos Ford offered an opposing view that Barbados is indeed in a debt trap. To add some facts and context to Dr. Robinson's naked assessment of Barbados' public debt, the global financial crisis, which is categorized as a shock similar to COVID, hit Barbados in 2007-2008, and Barbados' public finances saw an upsurge in local domestic debt. The economic strategy of government at the time relied heavily on debt from the central bank, where the printing of money, the NAS, treasury bills. Therefore, debt and interest payment to these local institutions skyrocketed, which caused unsustainable fiscal deficits. In the table produced by Professor Robinson in his Nation newspaper article, he highlighted that the more significant increases in debt over the period 2005-2022 occurred in years 2017, 2013, 2009, and 2007. While there was a major reduction in debt in 2018, largely related to the debt restructuring exercise. Massive interest payments bled the government between 2007 and 2018. As payments went from 343 million at 2007 to 764 million at 2017. This is over a 10 year period. Due to the downgrades, the cost of borrowing went up and therefore attracted large interest rates. There is a visible reduction in interest payments since 2018, however, this did not occur by paying down debts, but by restructuring, reprofiling, and retiring the old debts that were not included in the debt restructuring. Between 2007 and 2017, foreign reserves were depleted as large loan payments that were borrowed from international capital markets between 1994 and 2008 became due and in quick succession. It should be noted that no massive increases in foreign debts were recorded between 2007 and 2017. Between these years, the country was able to avoid entering into another IMF program. Our foreign debt was only a small percentage of GDP. As of 2007, foreign debt stood at $1.9 billion. This then climbed to $2.9 billion over the space of 10 years. In 2018, external debt skyrocketed from $2.9 billion to $4.6 billion at the end of September 2022. That's close to $1.7 billion borrowed in four years. In 2012, the external debt ratio stood at 28.4% as compared to September 2022, and that ratio now stays at 43%. Between the years of 2007 and 2017, Barbados had access to its domestic credit markets with a thriving and rapid growth in uptake of locally issued central bank bonds and treasury bills. As compared to 2018 to 2022, treasury bills grew from 569 million to 3.3 billion at the end of 2017 to finance government operations. And as of September 30th, 2021, Treasury bills only accounted for $451 million. <clears throat> as part of world economic history, Barbados became the fourth country in the world to restructure Treasury bills. This is not a good record, as this only ever occurred in Russia, Ukraine, and Uruguay. The Barbados government in 2018 defaulted on both domestic and foreign debts. Barbados says local debt only dropped, as previously mentioned by Professor Robinson, because of the debt restructuring 
and not by paying no any debts as he would have claimed. It is noteworthy that most of the foreign loans restructured in 2018 were loans that were borrowed between 1994 and 2008 under the Arthur government. Today, many Barbados are still owed debts from the government with a promise to pay in bonds. As locals continue to hurt from the restructuring and their payment schedules has not restarted as yet. The international debt payment schedules only started this year, September 2022, and the only debts that could have been paid are the debts that had been excluded from the debt restructuring. Professor Robinson made the point that debt being repaid are not being highlighted. However, based on the factors above, he should specify which debts that were paid between 2018 to 2022 that were not highlighted as it is common knowledge that Barbados has not been repaying its debts between 2018 to 2022. The recent boss plus failure is another and deeper indication of a domestic borrowing market that has been completely obliterated by the 2018 debt restructuring. This indicates serious market failure of the domestic credit market. In Barbados, all of the recent attempts by government to raise funds locally since the debt restructuring has failed. It also failed to meet the required threshold, including the original boss plan and the $125 million central bank bond that was author offered in November 2021. <coughs> Barbados continued to be barred from international capital markets because of the voluntary default in 2018. <coughs> the only available leaks of finance are that from the international financial institutions are from bilateral country to country, hence why Barbados is more reliant on China for investment. In 2012, the debts owed to these international financial institutions was only $718 million, by which in 2018 it increased to $1.3 billion. That's a small amount. However, by September 2022, this amount increased to $3 billion. That's an increase of $1.7 billion in a four-year span in foreign debts owed to these banks. Government is forced chain to the IMF, IADB, World Bank, and as another world recession is on the horizon, the hope of a profitable tourism product has diminished. The Central Bank report quoted travel receipts needing to earn an additional $1.3 billion more in revenue by the end of this year in order to reach 2019 levels. Government tied its own hands by restructuring the central bank financing and restricting its ability to finance government operations, restructuring NAS, and by destroying the treasury bill market, causing domestic financial markets to crash. Government continues to be banned from international capital markets due to its default. The current account deficit are in simple terms the foreign exchange loss at September 2022 stays at $967 million, which by year end will surpass $1 billion. And my further prediction is that Barbados will record its largest current account deficit in its economic history. This is the second consecutive year for abnormally large foreign exchange losses. As in 2021, the country recorded a $1 billion deficit as well. As this hole continues to grow larger, Barbados will have to borrow from the IMF as the main source of foreign exchange. This analysis was predicted in my media review of the Central Bank Report, which was carried in the Nation newspaper and is also featured in my book, Alternate Views, Barbados' Economic Road to Republic. The debt bill to these institutions will grow, as Barbados has no clearly defined strategy to earn foreign exchange. Thank you very much. I am Kimar Stewart.